Welcome back to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa time for the paper review. We'll take you through the pages of a national dailies. As always, we have Upunabon Kataria who joins the show. He's a public affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us, Upunabon Kataria. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning, Good morning. All right, let's start off with the leadership newspaper. And as always, we will pay attention to the board uh, headlines or the banner caption, if you like to put. And uh, looking at the front story this morning, federal government states deplete excess crude accounts by $37 million, uh, despite oil price above $40 benchmark in 2021. But nobody's talking about the fact that we're looking at $90 recently. How come that has not become some kind of news? Because a lot of persons have been saying this would actually be a great move for us. 2014 saw so us, you know, depreciating. And uh, 2022, we're making that. And that's a good one. So if we have the oil, um, I mean, the, the price at $90 per barrel, that's a good one for our economy. I hope we can make sense of it before, you know, we crash down. Away from that, you also have only 35.368 million left. Uh, that's million dollars left. Government's not saving excess crude sales. Uh, that's another one you find there. Uh, why President Mohammed Buhari did not go to Zamfara by road? That's what the president is quoted to say. Igbo presidency will settle Biafran agitation. Find out who's saying all of that. Um, Nigeria targets 141.250 billion naira from sugar tax on soft drinks and orders. Pressure mounts on APC to throw out party chairmanship race open and uh, just before we move away from the leadership newspaper you also have 28 killed scores abducted in kaduna niger attacks 1.74 million malnourished children in northeast according to unicef and vice president yomi sibandro tax traditional rulers on ethnic religious tolerance these are some of the headlines on the leadership this morning all right, let's move straight over to the Punch newspaper uh, today. And, of course, some very interesting stories are coming in the Punch newspaper. Um, and I cannot wait to take uh, Bonabon Kutera's um, thoughts on this. Um, let's start with the, 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 the Punch newspaper, of course. Um, presidency, APC in Dalima over zoning may throw race open. APC in Dalima over zoning may throw race open. Uh, with the writers, APC considering best options for winning presidential poll source another writer there parties free to pick presidential candidates from any zone says acf that's the area consultative forum uh and then last writer apc keeps INEC waiting on convention bauchi awaits peace panel uh, at the top of the uh, front page of the punch in it says a bank customers transferred 278 trillion naira via e-channels in 2021 nibbs report amazing amazing wow uh also at the top you have federal government must justify fresh three trillion naira vote others for fuel subsidy senate i hope um they mean what they're saying or you know and that it's not something to just print and put on national dailies <laughs> uh, another one 24 gun down uh, as killings rise in kaduna niger it was also on the leadership minister of Messi you talked about, and uh, it's really sad. Uh, refineries rehabilitation gulped 100 billion naira in 2021. Refineries rehabilitation gulped 100 billion naira in 2021, says NMPC. All right. Um, I, we, I'm sure we're going to be expecting, you know, lots of fuel coming from the refinery very soon with that, uh, such amount of money. Um, transport fares jumped by 28.3% or 283% amid rising fuel subsidy. And I, NBS report, that's in Nigeria Bureau of Statistics. NDLEA seizes 48,000 tramadol tabs, 22 UK, France, Portugal passports. At the bottom of the front page of the Punch newspaper, you're a champion. Come work with us, Lawan tells Aquaibom governor. You're a champion. Come work with us. Uh, in some inter-party wooing, if you want to call it that. Boyfriend fleeing after killing, beheading girlfriend arrested in Ogun State. That's a good one that he didn't get away. Ekiti APC primary didn't hold. We will challenge outcome Bami Dele. So we see what we talked about on Friday. Uh, playing out at the bottom 
of the front page Ogun Assembly alleges graft summons local government chairman. Three arrested as Oshun vows clampdown on Elisha killers and Fireshay Oni clash alleged sellout rigging in a PKT PDP primary. Uh, there you go. There you go. We'll see what happens. Um, over to you, Mercy. All right, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper this morning. And uh, the board caption reads, only 2.5 million motorists captured as insurers plan, 7,500 for third party. Stakeholders agreed to review the 18 years after policy was pegged at 5,000 naira. Inflation jacks cost of vehicle repairs. Industry operators are crying out. Away from the board caption, Ohaneze wants of danger if not succeeds Buhari in 2023. Concerns of cyber crimes unleash SMS, SMS based Android malware on Nigerians. And Tanu gives federal government a February deadline to settle minimum wage and IPPIS issues. Movement demands information on 3 trillion naira fuel subsidy. In fresh attacks, bandits killed dozens in Kaduna and Niger State. Now, the issue of security will always be, uh, you know, a priority. I mean, a major concern for us in our country. Well, that's so much we can take on the Guardian newspaper this morning. Yes, indeed. Um, let's go over to the nation newspaper. And this one has got me laughing. I don't know if our, our guest, Oponabon Kotara, is laughing. Um, but the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, the reworked Electoral Bill, um, we are being told from the Nation newspaper may be headed back to the presidency with this headline from the Nation newspaper. Governors lead opposition to reworked electoral bill. Governors lead opposition to reworked electoral bill. The writers to that story have also got me laughing. Uh, resignation before primaries, unworkable. Consensus causes in contention. Resignation before primaries, Unworkable consensus clauses in quotation, and the word unworkable is put in quotation uh, marks there. Lobby begins to stop president, uh, presidential ascent as Buhari gets bill today. Oh, my, my word. Tax returns. FIRS begins probe of big companies. Um, at the top of the paper, it is stayed in focus. Um, Post-primary crisis, rock APC, PDP in a kitty state, decision on petitions today. Oni, slums, are you fire shade? Those are the writers to that story. Another one from the Nation newspaper. How CBN is battling rise in food prices by a mere a Should they be really doing that or give us a stable naira? Um, GAC, we have not decided to replace so although the JC means the governor's advisory council here is the thing as far as APC legacy is concerned. Um, at the bottom of that that paper, the front page, uh, 29 killed in Niger Kaduna government attacks and uh, police arrest five over Ilefe, Elisha unrest and gunmen kill soldier. You have a picture uh, from those attacks of a burnt Hilux van there. All right, those are the papers we have uh, this morning. Let's delve straight uh, into the analysis of those papers with Opunabo in Kotaria. Um, Ms. Kotaria, what are your thoughts on the fact that even before the new um, Electoral Act Amendment Bill is passed on to Mr. President, we hear that the governors are already uh, making some noise? All right, while we're trying to get uh, Upunabo and Kotaria back uh, with us, um, uh, we know we've been talking about this, Mercy, and it's been an ongoing conversation. Um, the fact that we're looking forward to having this bill uh, on Mr. President's table so he can do this. Take a pen and just with that green pen, sign M. Buhari. And some of the CSOs... <laughs> so you, you sound like you know what... The, oh, yeah. Over you the, know what... The, it's a green pen. Green pen. Okay, so you know the yeah. green pen. Yes. And, the fact and, that you know how the president would sign his signature, yes, yes, we know it should be just M. But, but remember one of this, uh, the guests we had last week or so was talking about delay tactics, delay tactics, you know, delay tactics. And then the INEC officials have been saying, oh, um, we, we, we are racing against time. The 360 day requirement for us to announce this um, uh, election timetable, it's very important. Um, Fessus Okoye last week said, we need this bill signed. We don't have time if we're to have the elections hold on February 18, not February 14, not February 14, 2022, 23, we need to have 360, it's, it's, it's time is ticking, Mercy. Time is ticking, the clock is counting. 
you know, and here again we see the 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 uh, politics, politics, you know, the political battle between the governors and the National Assembly members, you know, playing out. The National Assembly members put that clause there, the conventional clause for direct primaries, so that the governors wouldn't have the power to remove them. You know, because governors can say, okay, direct primaries means everybody has to vote from the f lowest level to the highest level of the party. If it's a national election, national. If it's a state election, state. So, interior district and then uh, federal constituency and so on. And, uh, of course, they didn't have their way. Even though Ahmed Lama went to see the president as usual, had discussions and then came out through his usual path to stand where he normally stands to talk to the press, nothing happened. And they had to rework it. And it's so interesting to see that they smartly now said, because I didn't know this before, they smartly now said, you have to resign before primaries. So probably the power will be taken away from you um, so as an incumbent, so you can't determine the outcome of the election. So, so that, that's, that's really controversial. That's really controversial. So, so um, like, you know, a lot of political pundits have actually put out that this might just be a delay tactic, you know, to ensure that... The, because at the end of the day, if you look at the Electoral Act Amendment Bill as 2021, uh, you will find out that the major ingredient that a lot of persons are looking out for is the fact that elections will be transmitted, uh, results will be transmitted electronically. I mean, let's have the backings of the law. We understand that some people will say, oh, yeah, the server and all of that, that has happened over time. But you know what has happened with some of the elections that we have experienced in Nigeria and the court cases. And mm -hmm. so that's the reason why a lot of persons are bent on saying, let's have the president assent to this bill. But you know, with all of this clause, now, you wouldn't even, you want to agree with me the fact that this is politics, and that's what we talk about. Politics is an interest, is interest. So you will always have people agitating when their interests and lobbying for their interests to be represented, and when their interest is not represented, that's what you have. But this is at the detriment of national interest and democracy at the end of the day, because with the back and forth that's going on, it just shows that the lawmakers, the governors, and all the stakeholders at the center stage are not even considering the fact that we're running out of time. Yes, we understand also that when we spoke with the, um, the Commissioner for Information and uh, Voter Education, Festus Okoye, he talked about the, uh, the issue of having internal mechanism by the electoral umpire itself, which would allow it go ahead. But you, it would also bring us back to the fact that some of these issues, at the end of the day, the outcome of these elections will be contested. Because you would also want to begin to make reference to the fact that, oh, the laws didn't give backings to X, Y, Z. The law didn't give backings. And these laws were not sufficient enough, you know, to ensure that these actually happen. So we already know that it's impossible to have, uh, you, we already know that it's impossible for you to have that clause. That they would not accept it. So why did you even introduce the clause in the first place? Mm. Well, yes, we, we, yes. we do have our guest yes, back. Indeed. But, but before, uh, before I need to make a correction, you know, um, or point out rather that, you know, um, the, the clauses in contention are resignation by uh, appointed political uh, office holders, including... Who's many, asking? Yes. No, this, this is what the, we hear the clauses are in the bill. Resignation by appointed electoral, elect, uh, political office holders, number one, number two, including ministers, commissioners, and others before 2023 primaries. Um, so that's the first one. And of course, the, uh, the provision for... Um, you know, consensus candidates, which means that every candidate must sign. Yes, you know, and I agree. <laughs> yeah. And if they so, don't... <laughs> so, so, like you said, it's about interest, and um, they need to put national interest first. Well, we have Opuna Boy and Kutaria uh, back on the line. Uh, Mr. Kutaria, are you there, please? Okay, we, we're still trying to get uh, Opuna Boy and Kutaria back on the line with us, but you talked about interest, and I think that uh, it national interest, I think that's a very important point, Mercy. The fact that, you know, it shouldn't be about what do we need to do to protect ourselves. It shouldn't be about what do we need to do to keep ourselves in in in, in, power. in power, you know. And the governor should also not be thinking that what do we need to do to continue to control the status quo and control the outcome of our party primaries. In other words, these guys are just, you know, concerned about what happens to them. You know, when last did you see the National Assembly members fight? You remember? Why did you say that? No, I, I mean, I'm because I want to. to when, I want to understand. When, when last did you see the National Assembly members maybe tear shirt or jump okay. gate? So I, I think that we have uh, Open Up on Katara back on. We have him back on, on the line. On the line. You know. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. I've always, I've always heard you. I've always heard you. Okay. 
Well, so we seem to have some kind of disconnection right there, but it's good to have you back. And uh, just like Kofi had posed to you, uh, what do you make of the fact that the governors are actually, you know, leading the opposition to the fact that uh, they need to rework the electoral bill? There's also a press that people have to resign their position before the primaries actually take place. And we're talking about time now. Time is of the essence. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I am about to... Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm about to the issue of the governor resigning before if they're interested in any elective office. I, I know that uh, that is to cure the problem of uh, incumbency, the power of incumbency. Because these governors have tremendous power and resources at their disposal to influence elections. So to ensure a credible, fair, and a transparent election, the thinking of a lot of people is that this government should resign in order to vitiate their influence. Influence. Uh, but I don't think it's right because <coughs> that will be contradicting constitutional provision. If you're sworn in on the 29th of May, 2000, your standard expires on the 29th of May, 2004. Resignation before that time will shorten your tenure. Yeah, Mr. Nkutaria, yeah, Mr. Nkutaria, so, sorry to interrupt you. Position. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Nkutaria. And so, so we just yeah. have to make the correction that this, this um, uh, uh, clause sort of is uh, for resignation, is for appointed, appointed. electoral, um, uh, political office holders, not elected. I'm coming to that. I'm yes. coming to that. Okay. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Okay. Now, talking of the appointees, it has always been a tradition. The governors and the president ensure that the appointees resign if they're interested. It has been the norm. That's the truth about it. No, I, I don't think there is any appointee that remains, for example, as a commissioner and contested for any political office in Nigeria. I doubt. Yeah, maybe, but I have not heard of that especially in recent times, in recent times. So I don't think we need, but probably what the National Assembly is trying to do is to make it mandatory, because right now it's voluntary. So the National Assembly wants to make it mandatory so that you are fettered by that law if you are in office. It's no longer a person of choice. Uh, but then, the truth about it is that if you are a minister, for example, are you interested in any, so you are interested in a gubernatorial election? You want to be the governor of the state? Are you a serving minister? It really has no influence. It will not have any impact. Unless the president is with you, or the state governor is with you. Because as a minister, it will be extremely difficult for you to defeat the state governor in his own state, except the government is with the president is with you. Or the state government is useless to a point where the people have already disowned him even before the election. So I don't think, as a, to me, that law is just to ensure that it is, there is a law to that effect. It is no longer a matter of choice, but a matter of compulsion. Otherwise, in recent times, Appointees are made to resign, like in AKT. The government in AKT told those who are interested in any political office to uh, elective office to resign. It has always been the tradition. But they just want to make it legal. It's as simple as that. Okay, Ms. Nkutura, interesting. Let's do with political stories now. And uh, on the top left uh, front page of the uh, Nation newspaper, you have um, uh, a report on the post-primary crisis rocking the APC and the PDP in the Kitty State. Last week we had, um, you know, uh, politicians from the Kitty State on this program, you know, and uh, the the talk was, oh, basically nothing was wrong, you know, everything was, was good and all that. Uh, but now we see that you know, the expected has happened. Well, your thoughts on, on the problems of internal democracy in our political parties um, as, as, as shown probably in this security state uh, um, affair? 
Well, well, what is happening? It, okay, it is a mistake. It, it, it what is expected in Nigeria, where you have people with vigorous out of touch control on political parties. You have the masters, the godfathers, trying to impose their candidates on the people. And most of them are resisting this imposition. And that is what is going on. There is no internal democracy in APC or in PDP. No internal democracy. And that is why the issue of consensus, uh, sorry, direct primaries only was ideated in order to address this issue. <coughs> the money backs want to protect their interests and by so doing, they impose candidates that they believe are loyal to them. Not necessarily candidates that are loyal to the party, or loyal to the country, or loyal to the state. But candidates, they believe they can remote control. And in most cases, those candidates are unpopular candidates. And that stimulates schism in the party. That is why whenever you have primaries, you have this kind of issues coming up. Because the candidates are not the candidates, the chosen ones by majority, but by a microscopic few. So you will always have this internal ranking. Occasion by selection and not election. All right, um, let's also look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, despite oil price above $40 benchmark in 2021, uh, the federal government state depletes excess crude accounts by $37 million. And we only have $35.368 million left in the excess crude account. Uh, let's share your thoughts on that. What do you think? Are we going broke? Did it, did it, did it? Did they say we have just 37 million? They said every state defeats excess food that can buy, oh. which means what was deducted was 37 million dollars. I don't think they said what is left. What is left? They are, gone through. they are saying that what is left is 35.368 million dollars left in the excess food okay, account. Okay, 35 point, okay. All right. So, what is your question? Sorry. I would like to share your thoughts on that. Do you think that we're having more money? Are we going broke as a country? Well, of course, we are going broke as a country. <laughs> Our resources have been grossly mismanaged by this administration. We have been borrowing. We have been taking from our accounts. Even the governors are struggling to also get their own share. So that we are getting broke in Nigeria is no news. The only time I can tell you that Nigeria could rightly say it was financially accountable was under the Obasanjo's administration. We have debt we are written off, and our foreign reserves went up. Aside from that, well, under Jonathan, it wasn't this bad. But under this present administration, this is the war. This is one administration when we in the balance of history shall be found wanting in terms of our finances and a lot of other issues. It calls for worry. We are getting broke. If at all, we are not broke as a nation. In fact, I believe we are broke as a nation. As a nation, we are broke. So, and it's quite ominous. The figure you see there is quite too much. The deduction and what is left is quite criminal. Considering the, the, the attitude of this government to borrow and borrow and borrow. The nation has been sold. We've sold this nation because I wonder when we can, not to talk, service the debt, not to talk of defraying our debt. I wonder if we can ever service the debt. Okay, Okunabon uh, Kotaria. It's a problem. Um, do you also think that with the global oil benchmark that tops $90 for the first time since 20, 
uh, 14. Do you also think that this might just be a good one for us? Just as we're getting broke, we're of also... Course. Of course, of, of course, for those, for, for a country that is financially prudent, it's a good sign. But I tell you, for a country that is profligate, it really makes no sense. A man who cannot manage a hundred thousand cannot manage two hundred thousand. So why is the record development? Why we hope to make more money? But the management of the resources is going to be a problem as always. Always. Especially with this administration. It's quite wasteful. It's an administration that is extremely wasteful. And and really does not have a bearing on what to do with the funds at his disposal. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Sengutara, we, we have to pull the plugs at this time. We want to thank you very much for your time. Uh, you saying that, you know, even if they, we get up to $90 a barrel, it may not mean much because of our spending habits as a country. Thank you very much for your time. Upon Abba and Kutara has been a guest on of the press right here on Plus in Africa. He is a public affairs analyst. And uh, we have to go on a short break today. Um, in History is up next. And let's take a look at some of the activities or events that took place years ago on this particular day. And when we come back, we have interesting conversations right here on Plus TV Africa, especially the role of citizens in Nigeria's democracy and something to do with urban farming. If you heard of that term, never heard of it, you learn some more when we come back.